Melbourne United, and Southeast Melbourne Phoenix. Today, they will face off for the first time since last year's semi-final series. It's been 180 days since Melbourne United and the Southeast Melbourne Phoenix went head-to-head. -head. That was game three of the semi-final series. Not enough. The Phoenix forced a turnover at halfway. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, took him yes, away. Oh, oh, here we go. And Mason Peatling balancing on it. And Tempers have flared in throwdown 13. Really silly stuff by Peatling. Not necessary. They've had 180 days to think about Game 3 in the semi-final series. And today they get some of their revenge. The Phoenix win at 94 to 86. I a deflection with Pete Ling. I turned around and I just took off. It was a great pass by Easy, but uh, I didn't honestly know it went in. I didn't know it was on Daly. I didn't know anything. I didn't see the replay. All I saw was I looked up and I got a shoulder in the face. And after that, I was like, that's not OK. We don't, we don't play basketball that way. I'm never going to let anyone play that way. So I apologise to people if I took the game into, into the wrong way, but I'll protect my teammates, I'll protect myself, but that's not how you play basketball. We had a very hype situation, a bit of yelling and screaming, leave it at that, but there's no need to check someone. It's not rugby, this is basketball, so if they want to play that way, they can play that way. You know, I can proudly say, and I've been pretty open about where I've been over the last 12 months and where my mental health was at, but even after that dunk, I was probably in probably the worst mental state I've been in for probably 18 months. It was hard because there was a lot of attention on me and I didn't really want it. Like it's, it's, it's all great and nice sometimes when you get photos of kids or some fans and you, you, know, you see their faces and how excited they are, but when millions of people and thousands of people are messaging you and you know, kind of having a go at you or having a go at, at talking about Delhi and his, you know, his, what happened to him and then, you know, how Mason hit me and whatever else and how we hate each other and this, that and the other and I did it because of this. It was so silly and I was pretty beat up about it. Like as much as it's a cool moment, I actually don't really like it because it kind of brought up a lot of emotions and I had to learn a lot from that. At first I kind of did the post, tagged Mason and for me that was immature, like it was, but at the time, it was like stuff for you guys. You know, I was soon turned the corner and I was like, you know what, that wasn't professional. And when I first got the chance in person to speak to Mason, I said, hey mate, look, there's no hard feelings. I'm sorry for what I posted. He kind of said the same thing and, and he apologized for his actions. He goes, I was never trying to hurt you or anything. And it was nice. Last game, it simmered down a little bit. I think everyone was expecting fireworks and rocket ships to, to blow up. But um, as I said, you know, I spoke to, to Mason and, and um, you know, just kind of, cleared the air a little bit for everyone else, I think. For us, we kind of knew where we were at, but we hadn't physically spoken about it. So for me, it was a, it was a moment in time that's in the past and, and something we can all move forward from. As much as it's a cool play, uh, and kids love it, it's, uh, it's one play and it's not, you know, it shouldn't define your career. We're down here at iFly over in Essendon. These legends are absolutely phenomenal. I've been here quite a bit in my time. Uh, down here to show the boys how to skydive safely in a wind tunnel. I think it's really important for the team to kind of do these bonding sessions. Uh, you go out, you have a bit of fun, you get away from the basketball, the politics, the stress, the yelling, uh, you know, all the little things that go on in behind closed doors. Uh, all the hard work's great on court, but you've got to come off court and enjoy your time with each other. So I think that's the most important thing. <laughs> I think the funniest person to watch out here tonight is going to be Big Joe Chi. Um, as much as I call him King Chi, I think he's going to be one of the little uh, towel boys uh, in here. We're going to probably rub his face off the smudge marks off the side. Uh, it's not a big tunnel, I think it's 15 feet wide, and I think when Joe puts his arms up and puts his legs out, I'm pretty sure he's going to be touching all sides at once.
That was unreal. Yeah. It's actually really tough to even get stable and fly on your own. They do a phenomenal job. It helps when you have really good instructors that kind of help and coach the boys really well. But everyone did really, really well. Joe was awesome. The high fly, the slow mos of Joe's face is uh, it's going to be really good. Going back home for an actual home throwdown is going to be pretty special. To have the fans there, you know, they're going to bring in intensity and a feeling of like, let's go, we're on here. Like, this is ours to, to win. And that's what you want to feel. Our fans are phenomenal. We've got the most passionate and we've got the best fans. I really do believe that. I've played some pretty amazing places and I know people here understand basketball. You know, they're going to be tough on you when you're playing like because they understand what we want to do and what we want to achieve. So to go home, to play a home game, to have all the Phoenix faithful there, um, sitting courtside, cheering, hollering, going crazy. I think any time you beat your Crosstown rival is pretty special. It's, um, it's, it's a challenge. They're tough. They're really well coached. They have been for a long time. They've got great leaders. You know, Chris has done an amazing job over there. Um, he gives them a professionalism and he gives them an edge and he gives them a toughness and confidence and swag. And what they do is, is tough. They've got defenders, they've got a deep bench, they've got guys who could all start on that team from one through 11 or however many players we have. Every time you play them is, is a challenge, you know, to say the least. And you feel like you're, you're kind of pushing it uphill. You're really trying to, you know, dodge all the bullets they're throwing at you. And if you get a win, when you do, you've really got to understand why you got that win understand how you can grow from it because you better believe they're going to go back, you know, they're going to war room it and they're going to say, well, this is what we need to do better next time in order to capitalize and gain an advantage. So you take the, 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 the small wins when you can, but at the same time, you, you don't hang on to them very long because you know they're going to be coming back twice as dangerous and more powerful next time. So it's nice to beat them. It's hard to beat them, um, but I think we're doing a better job of competing with them and, and playing to a level that they've, that they've brought for many seasons now and won many championships because of.